let's try this again. Let's talk about marriage and family therapy. This video is so needed because there's a lot of confusion about what marriage and family therapy is and understandably so. The first thing to know is that I don't only work with married people or families. So that's the number one thing we need to talk about today. What's on your mind? All right. Hi guys, my name is Stephanie Yates Anya Buile, Steph Anya for short. I'm a licensed associate marriage and family therapist and this channel is for people who love therapy, people who are interested in becoming therapists, and people who are just looking to create their best lives. So let's dive in. Today we're talking specifically about what marriage and family therapy is. And I'll warn you guys, I'm a little bit of a nerd, but I'm going to try to bring it down to layman's terms so that you have a better understanding of why marriage and family therapy is different than other mental health professions. Not better necessarily, but definitely a better fit for me. So the first thing we've got to talk about is the misnomer marriage and family therapy. I so badly wish that it was called relationship therapy or systems therapy because marriage and family therapy makes it seem as though we only work with married people or only work with families and that's just not the case. For my client load and for a lot of my colleagues, a majority of our clients are actually individuals. It has less to do with who we're seeing and more to do with how we view the problem that they're experiencing. Systems theory, I think, is the best way to kind of explain the difference in how we view the problem. So we don't look intrapsychically to figure out what's wrong with the person. We're not thinking necessarily that it's all thoughts um, or that it's all how they were raised. We're looking more interpersonally than intrapersonally. And that means that we look at this human being in context. I don't have my clients lay on a couch and ask them about their dreams. There is definitely validity to that approach, but I'm not as focused on what's happening in your mind as I am on what's happening in your life. So we're viewing things in context. Now when it comes to problem and treatment assessment, we're not looking linear. So I'm not looking A leads to B. So for example, the overbearing mother. This is a very common trope where we look at this overbearing mother caused all of this harm or all of these frustrations for the client. And instead of looking at it so singular, we look at it through what we refer to as circular causality. So I don't say A equals B, I say A contributes to B contributes back to A. And we don't know which came first. And usually it's not that simple. It's A, B, C, D, E. They all are contributing to this pattern. And as a therapist, what I'm constantly looking for are those patterns to identify what patterns contribute the most to what the client is saying is dysfunctional or unhealthy in their life. So we don't look for that one person or one thing to blame. We're looking for the pattern overall. So when I say system, I'm not only talking about a family system, even though that is commonly what I work with. I've also seen friends. Sometimes, um, of course, I'm seeing couples. And we're trying to understand how these people interact with each other. So if I have a family of five, I'm not going to have all five of those people just come to me individually. I want to see what all five of them are like together. And that's very intimidating because you can have them in the room and have difficulty controlling the room or getting to the root of the issue. But from an observational standpoint, it's very important for me to see how they act when they are together. And also recognize that simply by me being present, I'm already changing the dynamics of that family. That's another very important thing to think about is that you're never really seeing how these families function when they're on their own because the very fact that you're there is going to modify 
the way that they interact with one another. But it's still really important to see that. So whenever I can, even when I have an individual, if they've got a friend or a family member in town, um, especially somebody that comes up a lot, I always encourage them to bring them into session. I say I'd love to meet them and learn more about you through their eyes. Sometimes you'll have a client who presents as very peaceful, very quiet and mild, and you bring the right person in the room and you see a completely different side of them. And that's what we mean when we say the whole is greater than the sum of the parts. Because those five people individually, it's going to give me a different picture than seeing them together. I'm not just looking at them as individuals. I'm looking at how this person interacts with that person, how they interact with that person, how these two interact, and then looking again at the family as a whole. I cannot understand an individual without understanding their system, and I really can't understand the system without understanding those individuals. Now, we also want to think about the concept of homeostasis. You might remember this concept from science and middle school. This concept that regardless of the external input, they try to get back to normal, okay? And families are the same. A lot of times we'll have a problem presented to us and we are not listening to, oh, this is the problem. We're thinking, now how does this problem serve a benefit in this system, okay? So I might have parents that bring me a child and they say, this child is acting so crazy. They're tearing up the room. They're getting in trouble at school. And through further investigation as marriage and family therapists, we're thinking, now what are the possible reasons why this child's behavior is actually serving some sort of benefit to the family? And sometimes, for example, it could be the parents don't even talk unless that child is acting up. And the child picks up on that, that when they are behaving badly, their parents become a team either against them or advocating for them so that they can get the resources to help the child. And so it can be something as simple as that, where we see that what is originally presented as a problem and that child is the identified patient, it actually is serving a dysfunctional system. And so we oftentimes think if we can just fix this one problem, life will be great. But sometimes when you take that problem out of the mix, we see other problems in the family. And that's because now without that problem intact, no one knows their roles anymore. So understanding that a family is going to try to get back to that sense of normal as you guys are making changes is a very critical aspect of marriage and family therapy as well because you want to know even if I'm seeing an individual what are some of the possible outcomes of if this client starts improving you know are, am I going to see possible issues in their romantic relationship are there going to be issues at work maybe we're working on the client advocating for themselves and and being a bit more assertive are we going to see that people who are in their life now and are accustomed to them always bending are those relationships going to start being more conflicting possibly and you have to prepare the client for some of the negative outcomes of positive change there are many different models of marriage and family therapy. I practice collaborative therapy. I know a lot of solution focused therapists. You have some Bowenian therapists and these are all very specific models. If you're interested in hearing about the different models or if you practice a certain model and need some more resources, let me know that in the comments. But most of our interventions, regardless of model, they're aimed at trying to cultivate a change in that system. We're just literally looking to change that pattern and lead it to a healthier outcome. And it's important to recognize that even just by coming to therapy, that's a change in and of itself. And that change could just be the catalyst needed for the change that you're looking on a larger scale in your life. So what is marriage and family therapy? It's understanding people in context, recognizing the multifaceted way that we present to the world and the way that we present in these very small subsystems of our lives. I serve one role in my work system. I serve another role in my friend system. I serve a different role in my family system, but a lot of times there are commonalities. So by understanding how people act in context, 
how they act in relation to others, we have a much better understanding of first, why the person is the way they are, and then also how the way they are impacts their system as a whole. So I'm not just looking, how does the system make this person? I'm thinking, how does this person contribute to the system as well? Again, that circular causality. So that is a very, very watered down explanation of marriage and family therapy. Again, don't think only marriages and only families. Think about looking at problems in context and trying to understand how those problems serve a function within the family. That's my take on it. So let me know, are there other questions that you have about marriage and family therapy that I didn't answer? I'd love to hear those down below in the comments. I ask that you subscribe to my channel and also like this video if you found it to be informative. Again, I'm Stephanie Yates, Anya Buile, Steph Anya for short, and you're watching another What's On Your Mind segment. Thank you. What?